According to Dr. Maureen Gaffney, there are nine life stages that we each go through that we need to master for a full experience of life where we experience happiness, gratitude, joy, love. And she breaks that down in her brilliant book, Your One Wild and Precious Life. And I highly recommend that you pick that up. But in this video, we're going to break down the last five key life stages. In the previous video, I broke down the first four, which go from zero to 18. And now we're going to go from 18 to the end of your life. So the fifth life stage is emerging adulthood, which goes from 18 years old approximately to in your 30s. And here the key life developmental task is self-responsibility, becoming independent or being dependent on others. This is the most important thing you need to learn in that phase to become self-responsible, to make your own decisions. For example, when I moved to college away from my parents, that was a moment when I really had to take responsibility of my own life, of my own choices. I had to pay my own rent. I had to make sure I have enough food. I had to build a circle of friends and relationships from scratch in a new city. I had to figure all of this out on my own. And there are three major developments you need to go through. It is from going from dependent, where you're dependent on your parents, mostly, maybe your friends and your teachers, to independent. Independent is in your 20s, in your 30s, and then later on you go to interdependent. But you first need to be independent before you can successfully be interdependent. And interdependent means that you are not self-responsible. You are, but you also rely on others. But it's not a dependency, it's more like a partnership. This is ideally what you have with your life partner, where it is interdependent, where you both do things on your own, but you are also able to cooperate together. So the first, like the fifth stage, emerging adulthood is all about learning how to be independent, making your own decisions. Then we've got young adulthood, which is from your early 30s to your late 40s. And that is about intimacy or loneliness. This is where you make commitments and you invest in your relationships. This is when most people get married or have kids or move in together in a house. And this is really the most important thing at that stage. You want to invest in your relationships and you want to make commitments. Your 20s is you discover, you test, you experiment, you figure out what do I like? What do I want? What is important for me in my relationships? When you're in your 30s or 40s, you make those major life decisions to commit to a job, to commit to a partner, to commit to having kids, to commit to a house. You make major decisions that are not easily reversible. Like up till your early 30s, most decisions are easily reversible. You can easily pivot. But once you commit in young adulthood, Making different choices is not as easy anymore. But this can be a time of great joy, but also a time of, I'm incredibly busy. I mean, once you start having kids, life just gets busy. So people in their 30s and 40s and sometimes 50s, they often report that they're so busy, that they have so many things to do. And that is true. I mean, I'm 27, but I have two children, and life is just busy and you have two children has so many more things to do and you're not as independent as you used to be when you were on your own or you just had your partner and you could make your own decisions that is not the case in this stage anymore but you've also learned how to handle with that very well if you went through the other phases correctly then we've got middle age which is from your early 50s to your late 60s and here's about generating or stagnating. Let me explain. Stagnating means at this stage in their 50s, you either have a feeling, yeah, I did the things I wanted to do, 
Are you ever feeling, man, I failed on the things I wanted to do or just, I just didn't get them. I, I wasn't able to achieve the things I wanted to achieve. And many people at this stage lose hope. When they haven't achieved something major, they lose hope and they give up. That's literally what they do. That's when people coast in their job and they like, I've been at this for 20 years and I haven't progressed. I don't see a, a path to actually achieving the goals that I want to achieve, so they stop. And when you're in your 20s or 30s, you may not be able to understand why people do something like that. I wasn't able to understand it. Now I do. In your 50s or 60s, you have life experience. But you have the choice to either stagnate and stay where you're at and give up the hope that there's something better on the horizon, or on the other side, this is the time where you give back. Maybe you become a mentor. Maybe you decide to write a book. Maybe you volunteer. You have also more time at this stage. In your early 50s, you start to get more time because maybe the kids are out of the house and as life is just not as busy as it used to be. Then we've got late adulthood, which is approximately early 60s to late 70s. And that is all about purpose or decline. This is the time when most people retire and the key developmental task at this stage is to have a purpose. Because a study has found that after people retire, especially men, they die within four years of retirement. It doesn't matter when they retire, in their 40s, 60s, 80s, Within four years, many men die after their retirement. That is crazy. Women, not so much because they have more like a purpose at home and being a parent, a grandparent, or maybe in their relationships. They're more grounded outside of their job. But many men take a lot of pride and purpose from their job. So this is the time where you, I, Hey, maybe not retire. I mean, I won't retire. Maybe I'll cut down on the time that I'm working, but I don't plan on ever retiring because I love what I do. Or you may be retiring, but you find another purpose in volunteering or helping your kids, raise their kids. But you have to find a purpose at this stage, otherwise the decline is really steep and you lose a sense of hope and vitality. And there's no purpose. But also in this stage, you have a lot of intimacy still with your partner. Now, at this stage, maybe your partner is already dead, so you're widowed. But a lot of relationships actually have a lot of depth and they have less fighting because you have so much experience and you've learned to let go, you've learned to forgive over time. So there's more harmony in your relationships and also your friendships go deeper. You have a lot of friends at this stage and you have the time to go really deep with your friends to have great experiences. And you also have this sense of life is short. You never know when it's going to end and you've seen your friends or maybe some of your family already die. Peers that were as old as you are already gone. So you have a sense of urgency in your life. You want to use your time wisely if you have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose, you're just watching TV. I mean, 70% of those in this age group spend most of their day watching TV. That's not a purpose. And that's a steep, heavy decline. And then we've got the last stage of your life, which is old age which is currently from your 80s till your death. Now, in 20 years, it could be different. I mean, people live longer. They live longer than they used to live 20 years ago. So I expect life expectancy to rise, but currently this is from your 80s till you die. And here the developmental task is integrity or despair. Now in this time, many people get sick and it's a time where you lose a lot. Maybe 
you lose your cognitive abilities, maybe you lose your physical abilities, maybe you lose some friends, maybe you lose your partner. I mean, in your 70s, most of your friends are still alive. But when you reach 80 or 85 or 90, many of your friends are actually gone. So this is a time where you need to really find what made your life special. You have to cherish those moments and you have to also use that time wisely. See how precious life is. And that are the nine major developmental stages. Again, if you didn't see the first four, then go back and watch the previous video. I'm going to link it up right here so that you can see that. And if you like this video, smash like and subscribe down below for more videos every week and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And then live fully, live openly, and be the leader of your life.